What it do, baby? It's your boy Tyreek Wynn. Y'all are tuning in to another episode of Navigating Journalism Podcast. We got a special big time guest in the building at Wynn Productions LLC in the studio. We got Kim Ford, a legend in the entertainment industry, man. She is killing it. I've been I've been seeing all your stuff and you have just been doing your thing. I, I admire it. Thank you. It's been a long time. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Well, I appreciate you so much for coming on the show. Um this is Navigating Journalism Podcast, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about, how you've navigated this industry and all the opportunities that you've had because literally, like, you have done some things that people can only dream of. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. It doesn't even seem that way. Like, when you're doing it, you mm -hmm. kind of just figure it out, and it's like, oh, that worked. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, you know, it's been a faith walk the whole way. Oh yeah, for sure. So what? Um, so tell everybody what you got going on right now. Like you literally, you just graduated from Georgia State. Congratulations on that. Grad yes, school, right? Grad school. Awesome. Undergrad Congrats. is at Grambling State University. I want to make that clear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> GSU. Um, uh, but yeah, I finished grad school. And the whole point of me going was not necessarily because I needed to go. Um, mainly I always just wanted to go to grad school. And in addition to that, you know, I'm self-taught. Like, my journey is totally different from someone that traditionally goes to journalism school and learn all the things. I never learned all the things. So I wanted to go back to grad school to kind of clear up some blind spots that I may have had. Um, for example, like, if Sony Pictures would fly me to L.A. and say, okay, Kim, it's time to shoot your stand-up. Before grad school, I was like, do my what? <laughs> I didn't know how to stand up. You know, I didn't know the, tech, the terminology. I was like, oh, you mean my intro? You know, of course, at, at that point, I realized I kind of want to button some things up. So that's why I went to grad school to kind of learn all the things that everybody else knew that I didn't know. You know, so I did that, um, learned a few things, um, whether it was theories or on the field type things. And, um, and when I graduated, I didn't really graduate to go get a job in journalism because at this point in my life that salary does not work for me <laughs> i was literally just talking I about that with i can't do that <laughs> you know i have two kids you know yeah. i mean older kids i have a, an adult daughter mm -hmm. and a teen son who's a senior in high school so i have real living expenses so i know starting out in journalism the money isn't typically there but it does eventually come of course if you get with a network you know and that's a part of the journey, right? While you're young, you can make those sacrifices. But I've already, I've, I've passed that part. You know, I did the sacrifices when I was learning how to build my, my media company. Mm -hmm. So I mainly did that for that. So at this point, I'm going to continue doing things in media. I'm going to continue doing things and building my personal brand, which is I Am Kim Ford, um, with my book, doing more speaking engagements, like another TED Talk. Mm -hmm. um, but also going into tech. So to okay. me, that's kind of sure. like where my focus is because, you know, merging media and tech. Media and tech goes together anyway. You know, I just know that's where the future is. So I finished grad school. I also finished, um, in addition to that, I did like a tech boot camp to become like a solutions engineer. And that's basically storytelling. All the skill sets that I've learned myself and in um, grad school, it's all storytelling. So you basically show someone basically how software works. And it definitely works together, whether it's a media software, things that I've used before. It could be something like HubSpot. It could be a social media software. I know how these things work because I know the pain points of a content creator. Mm. So I know the type of software yeah. that they need. So that's kind of what that entails. And that, um, that salary is a whole lot higher <laughs> than starting yeah. out old, you know, old school at, uh, you know, had I many, many, many years later, if I was starting out, yeah, I would definitely, you know, try that route to see how it worked. Um, but I always want to continue to build my own personal brand, um, do many more things in tech. Um, and in addition to that, as people reach out to me to do media things, if it makes sense, I will do it. Mm. If it does not, I'll pass because I've already done that. Already. Don't make money, don't make sense. <laughs> I leave it to somebody else who yeah. needs that opportunity. Yeah, for sure. That, that's that's what's up. And I think because um, I like that you are knowledgeable about this tech stuff. This mm -hmm. tech stuff is where it's set, yo. Like, yes. this is a big, like, tech is a huge industry. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. yeah. It's crazy. 
and for you to be knowledgeable about this stuff. See, that's why I always saying, like, when you in this industry, know multiple avenues oh of the business. Yeah. Because the more avenues you know, the more money you're going to make and you're going to kill it. Correct. And you are killing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I love that. So with um, so with the entertainment stuff, because you said you're building your own brand, I am Kim Ford, right? Talk about what it takes to build your own brand in this space. Because I know a lot of people want to have their own media companies, and there are some great legends who have done it, like Roland Martin. Mm -hmm. You know, he's one of them. And it's just like a lot of people who have done it, but like you've done it. Um, your brand is pretty big. I mean, you out here interviewing Tyler Perry on the red carpet. Like, <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, you doing the thing. So tell us, like, what does it take to build a good, successful brand in this media space? In this year, 2023, I want to date this, but you know, in the in the digital era, it's a whole lot you can do. You know, I started this. I launched my online magazine in 2007. At the time, it was called Jubilee Magazine, mm -hmm. and this was before. MySpace, this was before Facebook, <laughs> this was before anything that allowed you to be up and running within a couple hours, right? I did the grind work. Um, at that time, if you wanted a website, you had to pay a web designer thousands of dollars to build a website. I wasn't going to do that on something, I'm just kind of sort of figuring out, so I decided to just build my own website. <laughs> you know, at that time, that's when Yahoo was popping, so they had like a user-friendly site builder, so I built, I built my first website, I put some content on it. I knew the whole reason why I wanted to get in media, because my degree is in psychology. Okay. I am not, you know, I'm a, I pivoted into media, you know. Um, mainly because I saw a need, I wanted to make more um, faith-based content. I wanted to make more positive content. I wanted to merge um, faith with mainstream. I want to show many ways things can be done, right? Because I didn't see a, a whole lot of it. I was like, let me just do it myself. Yeah. So I created my site, got some content on this, um, on my website. And the first major event that I requested credentials to cover was the BET Hip Hop Awards. Because mm -hmm. when they first came to Atlanta, around 2007, something like that, they didn't know who I was. They didn't know I was brand spanking new, <laughs> built my own website. You know, I just knew I belonged there. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to yeah. figure this out. You know, I'm not going to wait to work at like an Essence magazine and try mm -hmm. to get there. I'm going to build my own thing and get there. And so um, that's what happened. I, um, and when I say I submitted pr cr uh, uh, press credentials, that's when you have to fill out a form and mm -hmm. who you are, just to make sure you're really a media outlet. You're just not some random fan that's just trying to get there, <laughs> right? There's actual... You know, they do get those. They yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a process. You have a vetting that you have to do. Anyway, I submitted it, and I got my email back. I said, you've been, you know, accepted or admitted. I was like, oh, my God. And so I got there. <laughs> I turned in all my paperwork, they checked me in, and this is the days when um, Terrence J and Roxy was doing 106 in Park. So I'm yeah. seeing them recording, I'm seeing the red carpet, I'm like, oh my God, I am really here. I was so excited, didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I brought my little point and shoot camera. You know, everybody, that's when vlogging first came on the scene. Mm, okay. This was when vlogging first started popping. And so some people had their small cameras, you know, the television stations had their big, you know, studio cameras. And I just did what worked, worked for me. You know, I, I asked my questions. I interviewed people like a, a Wiz Khalifa. And I saw Lecrae walking the carpet. I saw, you know, right, that's my boy, right? Bernice King walking the carpet. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I can have these conversations with these people. I may not ask them the same thing the person the outlet next to me may be asking them. Because that's not my niche, yeah. you know. That's not my audience, but I'm going to ask them, you know, something else. It could be about faith or it could be, you know, about their family, about other things. Sometimes there's like comic outlets there, you know, they're asking questions about their favorite, you know, comics or gaming or things like that. So that, that was my niche. So, um, so that's how I started to build my brand. Once you know your voice, what, it's like, why do you want to build your own brand? What do you want to say? What, where is there a void? And sometimes, even if it's not a void, what makes you different? Um, those are the key things to start even launching your own like media brand, specifically. I guess that's universal for any brand, but definitely in for a media brand. Why do you want to do this? Do you want to do it online only? Do you want a podcast? Do you want YouTube? You know, so now in this age, it's so, you can do it all at one time. You can pretty much streamline it. You shoot it once and you can put it on 
and on different outlets. So right now, if you want to start an outlet, do it. Like you don't have to wait for anybody's permission, right? You want to find out who you are, what is God telling you to do, what is your message, figure all those things out, you know, and from there, just just keep going. It's not going to, the path is not just straight. It's going to be like this, this, up, down. How do I do it? I'm stuck. I'm, I got to edit this myself because that was me many, many, many days. That's why I said it's pretty dope your dad is here to help you do that because I was the one figuring out every little, every single piece, you know? And so I was like, you know, people now, if you want to do it, I think it's important and you can do it because there's so, there's so many ways to get immediate these days. Yeah, I love that you shared that story about that, like, first event, getting into the BT Hip Hop Awards, man. Yeah. That's awesome. And I really like, and I had you on because I knew you would, like, come with these good stories. Yeah. And I don't know if you realize, but, you know, you and I have similar paths in a way. Mm -hmm. Like, I think my, my first event was the Super Bowl week. Like, oh, you know, so okay. yeah, it's just like, listen, like, you know, and then once you get to that first thing, yeah. you just keep it going. Right, <laughs> right. You do yeah. because you make relationships, right? Yeah. Relationships are so huge because that was my first event, but the way publicists kept reaching out to me and kept and stayed in my inbox, I knew it was time to take it to the next level. I would just get emails and say, hey, we have Sanai Lathan in town. Are you available to interview her? And I'm like... Yeah, and how did you buy me? Or I have Carmelo Anthony in town. Are you? I'm like, okay, people are starting to figure out who I am. Let me mm -hmm. let me tighten this up even more because in my mind, you get so deep into the work of it. I'm so into, am I doing this right? And what's next? Not so what someone else that's taking a step back can see coming from the inside. Yeah. It was a little different. So people relation. I would meet people there, and they would see I was professional. I would do good work. I would actually post the content because mm -hmm. some outlets they, they're they just don't there. post the content they, don't post it, they just show up <laughs> like it's a party yeah no it's work mm -hmm. you know and I tell people mostly women that all the time is like you might see my cute pictures I post but trust I have on flip-flops I'm bending down and you know trying to get the shot sometimes if I don't have a photographer there with me it's a lot of work it's a and you stay there late if you don't get the interview that you wanted sometimes you got to stick around if they if you still ain't get it yet so it's a lot of work, but it can be done, but relationships are everything. If you continue to make great relationships, people will continue to invite you out. Definitely. And then just a word of advice, like just like she said, if you want to succeed in this, especially like in the entertainment space, get in good with these publicists. Yep. These publicists is where it's at. Yep. The publicist is like the glue the between ticket. us <laughs> and the celebrities, yes. right? To get the these celebrities guys. don't know anything. No. <laughs> you ask them where they are next week, uh, let me go. No, yeah. but the publicist is the one who invites you out, mm -hmm. who emails yeah. you, who has all the details. Yep, send out knows, the press releases. Oh, yeah, yeah, send out the press <laughs> releases. They know, you know, what they can do, what they can do. A lot of people think, oh, I need to meet this celebrity. No, you need to know what public, who their yeah. publicist is. The publicist, their manager. That's who you need to know. To. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. And, and it's just so important because, like, they kind of make our lives easier. Yes. Because, yes. <laughs> like, when it comes to, like, getting these interviews and stuff, they be sending out, like, they be sending out press releases, yeah. letting us know what events, um, you know, coming up. And then another thing y'all people got to realize that all these publicists, they actually know each other. Correct. They know each other. That's another yeah. thing. That's what another thing <laughs> that I learned is that initially I was working with key publicists in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I knew, publicists in L.A. and New York were sending me stuff. Yeah. I learned that they shared lists. Mm -hmm. They, you know, tell you who's who. And another thing to know is everyone that says they're a publicist is not a publicist. You know, what what have you seen them do? What do you, what um, celebrities have you seen them promote? Meaning, are they just starting out? If they just starting out, they don't have the Rolodex to do like the big events, right? If they're starting out and you're starting out, maybe that'll work. But if you want the major major events, make sure you're working with a publicist who has a Rolodex of artists that they represent. Yeah. You know, whether it's with a studio or even if they're independent, they're going to be professional and have the relationships. Because one thing I learned, if, if the communication is choppy via the email process, when you get to that event, that event, <laughs> that event is going to be all over the place. They're going to start two hours late. It's going to be a huge headache. But when you're dealing with professionals, they have to stay on time. Yeah. And those are the events I would take. And I could tell when it was kind of shaky. And I was mm -hmm. like, no, I can't make it. I'm not going to go. Yeah. Oh, oh, let me tell you something. Because I didn't even, I, I, 
I had my fair share. I had been to some where they had started two hours late. Mm -hmm. They invited me back the next year. I said, I'm good. No, no. <laughs> Because who has, who has time? Well, it's like you leave. It's like we busy too. Yeah, we are busy. We have lives. If you, even if you have a full-time job, then you leave work to be there. You're ready. Nobody has time to just sit around because, oh, I'm so sorry, whatever random excuse for starting late. No, well, then don't invite me back. Because yeah. when you're dealing with like the professional studios, mm -hmm. things run like clockwork. It's not a party. Things work like clockwork, and you will be able to tell the difference between people that's just kind of sort of trying to put something together and make it look like it's big versus those this is what they really do mm, yeah for sure and then and then speaking of that getting to all these big events and stuff like that like i mentioned earlier you've interviewed the one and only the great mr tyler perry mm -hmm. fantastic amazing individual love that man that yeah. man is fantastic so you was on the red carpet when he had the grand opening for a studio right I, I seen, you know, so little testimony, right? Well, not really a testimony, but I could not get in. I tried, yeah. to, I, can't, I tried, and I think the reason I couldn't get in because I didn't know anything about it until literally like the last minute. And I'm telling you, I was going back and forth with the publicists. I was trying my hardest. I could tough. not get in, it was yo. Tough. It was I was tough. like, dang, I just it couldn't get in. Yeah, it was crazy. But, but what was your experience? But, like? but here's the thing. I didn't go there on behalf of my own brand. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you relationships are important? A friend of mine writes for AP, Associated Press, in LA. He said, he hit me up. He just texted me. He said, Kim, um, there's going to be a grand opening of Tyler Perry Studios. Um, the Hollywood Reporter is looking for someone to cover Atlanta. Can you do it? The Hollywood uh, Reporter? Yes and yes. <laughs> You know, so what if he wouldn't have thought about me? What if he didn't know I had a track record of doing, of being professional, posting my content, you know, all those things. He wouldn't have thought of me and be like, oh yeah, Kim can do this. You know, so he referred me to the Hollywood Reporter because they trusted him, you know, and so that's how I got in. I got in on, as I went there on, as for um, Hollywood Reporter. So with that, that's what allowed me direct access to interview Tyler Perry. You know, usually you have to run them down to get the interview while they walk in the carpet. No, not in this case, not when you're writing for the Hollywood Reporter. Sure. They brought him over to me to make sure, and that was all done in the emails before we even got there. We'll make sure we bring Mr. Perry over to Kim and do this. It was very, very, very um, pre-planned. In addition to that, a lot of media after the carpet was over, a lot of the media outlets left at that point. Yeah, that was it for them, even the, the, our NBC, ABC affiliates. But for me, mine included an invitation to actually go in. Oh, okay. To the event. Yes, nice. okay. yes. Like it was, oh, that, that was, was popping. Yes, because <laughs> that, was, that was a part of the story that I was to write the entire experience. And so when I tell you that's to this day the, the number one event that I have covered, life-changing event that I have covered, because I am walking in, I'm seeing TV Jakes, I'm seeing Crackle Dollar, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, when I tell you everybody, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, shout out, I'm seeing Beyonce, I'm seeing Jay Z, I'm, when I tell you, everybody, everybody, Tamron Hall, like literally, and Erica Campbell, she was like, hey Kim, and I turned around, I was like, <laughs> You know, so it was like a little homecoming type situation, yeah. you know, and the thing is, is once you interview celebrities over and over and over again, it's they like know they you know you, they right, know you know, are. so that's how Erica was, shout out to Erica E. <laughs> um, so yeah, Kirk, I mean, it was just, that was the best, and so I was able to do that, go in, um, Monica and Mary J. Blige, they sang, they had, and uh, when we sat down to dinner, I think it was only the Hollywood Reporter, which was myself, and um, reporters from Essence Magazine. And we were all at the table, and I still to this day have the menu with my name written wow. in cursive on it. It has Kim for it, and the men, I'm like, wow, Father, you really prepared a table for me here. You know, so that, that just never really happened. So when you do the work, and you continue to do good professional work, other doors will open up, even if you don't go on behalf of your own media outlet, if you go on behalf of someone else, it'll work. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think that's, um, that is 
so important because like the connection that you make at this stuff is mm -hmm. unbelievable, mm -hmm. yo. It is crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, and then I mean you at this event and like I'm sure I'm sure you like, you know, making all your connections, making your rounds, making your moves and stuff, but like getting into that stuff, it's just like when you in these spaces, you gotta take advantage. And I know you took advantage. You have to. You have to know how to handle yourself professionally again. You can't Excuse me. You can't turn into like a super fan. Like you have to really like center yourself. Cause I was literally walking as we was touring the different stages because he named the, the studios after different um, celebrities like Diane Carroll, Cicely Tyson, so many. Um, Will Smith, I talked to Will Smith there. Jada Pinkett Smith, I talked to her there. And so as I'm walking, and that's how I ran to Beyonce, uh, somebody <laughs> walked in front of me and I said, is that who I think it is? <laughs> like literally walk in front of me with this super long ponytail. Mm -hmm. And it was her and I saw Jay. And I'm like, wow. So I really did, you know, continue to make relationships with other media outlets there. Because they are, you know, your colleagues in addition to other publicists. There. Yeah. Because they don't have like, when they don't have, so, um, do they have security guards when they go to this stuff? Or like, do they? There was security. more accessible. There was security there, but he made it so exclusive. Mm -hmm. Everyone was like free to be themselves. Like the cast oh. from the real was there. Like all this is starting to come back to me. <laughs> the cast from the real was there. I'm talking to Anita Baker, and I'm just and everybody is just roaming around the room. Just everyone was in awe. First of all, of what Tyler, what he has created, what they said could not be done. You know, he did it and so many doors that he opened. And when I was talking to Will Smith, he was saying to other to the other actors around, he was like, this is what Tyler has been, but he's put up the money to build this massive studio. But we have to come in here and do good work and make good investments and help him make money, you know? And of course, as he makes money, they'll make money too because they'll be in the films. But the thing is, is that, you know, it was great to just see Tyler Perry just knock down so many doors. I was just in awe of the, of the whole thing. And so to this day, it's a life-changing experience. To be around that much black excellence at one time, yeah, it was a lot. For sure. I loved most, it. Most definitely. <laughs> that, that's an amazing experience. Yeah, that's like, so that's like really cool that you have like had that opportunity. Like that's, that's awesome. And then another thing that you mentioned earlier, you was talking about like how you were there on behalf of the Hollywood Reporter. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a lot of, I think that may be, something that a lot of journalists have thought about is like when you're kind of when you're freelancing and doing your own thing you can go to different events and represent different outlets and stuff like that because I remember like I remember one time by being at an event I made a connection with TMZ and they mm -hmm. wanted me to send them something you know it's just, it's just yeah. stuff like that so yes. it's like freelance is a really good position to be in or like doing your own thing because you're not you're not in a contract or you're not locked down so you can do stuff for other people. Very true. And that's and, and a lot of times if it's a bigger outlet, it'll open up so many more doors for you. It'll just launch your brand even even the more. Like that's a connection I would never want to give up. Yeah, for sure. Hollywood report. That's that, that that's a, that is fantastic. Like that you got yeah. that. that yeah. And I ended up covering like one more thing for them, basically mm -hmm. to cover like entertainment in Atlanta. I covered um it was when um, there was another film coming out. I can't think of his name. He's on that show called This Is Us. What's the guy's mm -hmm. name? Oh, um, dang, I can't remember. Black uh, guy. You know. The, mm -hmm. um, no. I can't think of him, but it led to me covering that. So, so yeah. It, it was it was a great opportunity. That's 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 what's up. I, I I love that for you. Like I mean, you had you've had some extraordinary opportunities for sure. Thank you. And then another one, I was thinking, um, there was this um, thing. What was I going? I, where was I going with this? I was going somewhere with this, and I can't. I lost my train of thought. But um, we were at. I remember we were at the Emmys last year. Yeah. And I had an amazing time at the Emmys last year. That was a fantastic event and just like getting opportunities like that what i want to know is big, big stuff like you know of course you were at the emmys you were attending us you were attending the emmys you go into all these big events right a lot of people are scared to ask ask to go yeah ask to go 
as to like some people might be scared to like fill out that credential application because mm -hmm. they don't think they're going to get in. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So how do you have the confidence to actually go after this stuff? I mean, again, that goes back to your why are you doing this? I know I belong there, right? I have that huge confidence that I belong there. I have a message that, so that I want to share with my audience. And if I don't get there, I don't have the content for them, right? So that's my why. I, my, my attitude is, well, we about to find out while I'm filling it out. You know, if they say no, they say no. I've been told no many times. I've tried to go to the Grammys and this is no. You know, but you, you just don't know until you actually submit that press credential. If you hear about an event, and a lot of times I hear about an event on the radio. Not a lot. In some cases, I might hear about an event, an event that's coming to Atlanta on the radio. I'll be like, oh, I want to go cover that. I Google it, do my research. Find out who is the publicist in charge of that. That's the key. Get my email chain going. You know, mm -hmm. how do I, you know, get press credentials? Sometimes they'll email me, email me the link, email me the form. You know, just just ask. You know, you just you have to just go out there and do it because in this industry you have to have the confidence. Knows can't stop you, <laughs> right? You have to even you have to even on the red carpet. If there's an interview that you want to get and this publicist is saying, I'm sorry, we got to go, but you make eye, and I've done this so many times, mm -hmm. I make eye contact with the, um, with the talent. Even if you can't get the actual interview, sometimes you can slide in one question still, professionally, not in a rude way, or sometimes just get the photo, you know, and you can write from it and just say, okay, you slide in, you be on one-on-one -on -one with your photographer, you tell your photographer, Hey, the publicist just said this is the last question with this, you know, I live next to me, but we're going to get this shot. I need you to be ready. We literally only have one second. That's why you have to have that relationship with yeah. your team. Have your camera. You can't be fidgeting and do it. You can't do all of that because you're going to miss it. You just grab them. Hey, do you want to take a quick photo? Click. Thank you. And that's it. You're polite. You got the shots you needed. You know, your story doesn't have a big gap in it because you don't have nothing to show that this talent was even there. You know, all of those things require confidence. But if you're scared, you, you're not going to even attempt to do that. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to do a lot of it. You have to have confidence, tact, professional, professionalism, know when to do that. Um, but always just go for it. For sure. Yeah, there have been many times on the red carpet. Listen, you might be a publicist. Right. You got me in. <laughs> But I gotta get yeah, this piece. Yes, I'm not listening yes. to you. I gotta like I gotta go get it. And it's like it's great. Like making that eye contact. It it works, yo. Yes, like make yes. the eye contact with them. And then sometimes you just gotta shove the mic in their face and yes. ask that question like you said, because that's the way you're gonna get it. You gotta be a shark out there, yo. You can't just let these publicists because they be trying to pull them away and stuff. Oh yeah. Go get, that. Go get mean, that piece. They're doing their <laughs> job, but yeah. guess what? We gotta do our job too. For sure. Right? You, you have to. And then sometimes they only want to pull them over to the really big outlets. Yeah. You no, know, we didn't come here and been standing all this time, an hour mm -hmm. ahead of time, and my feet hurt, and I got these, whatever. And I don't get something. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to, you just have to be really, really astute and strategic on, on how you want to get what you need. Yeah, and I put this outfit on and I'm looking good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. Right, now. Like, right. we're gonna, right. Now, we're going we, we gonna to get this interview because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's... It, and it'd be like that. And sometimes what I don't, what I don't like is I don't like how they put the small, like, cause they'll label spots on like the carpet and they'll put the smaller outlets at the end. Right. It's not really fair. Right. I mean, of course, you know, of course the big outlets are going to get their stuff, but like, you know, put some smaller outlets at the front of the carpet, just to yeah. like give them the opportunity and stuff. I think we're all here for the same thing. And I mean, I know numbers matter, but I mean, we're all here for the same thing. We're all here for the same coverage. Everybody's gonna get the stuff. Mm -hmm. Just like, let it be an equal opportunity for everybody. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of times, all the time, they get to the end of the carpet. They they're tired. They're tired, they don't wanna and talk. Go in. <laughs> time, time really is over. Or they may have to, if it's a film screen, they may have to go in to say something. So they got to go in to prep for whatever the interview. And celebrities are always late. So. They all, <laughs> they're they always, always late. late. So they don't have time. So even if there was time to talk to everybody, now they came in and now what was 10 minutes on the carpet is now maybe three. And it's like they're going straight to boom, boom, boom. And then that's it. But 
you really just got to know how to still get it. Or even though your name, sometimes I will move right next to an NBC outlet. I stand right next to them. Mm -hmm. And I will move myself and still get it because I know, I said, oh, I know they're coming to talk to them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be right next to them. I'm going to grab some of their audio. And I'm going to try to grab this because I'm standing right next to them. So why, why wouldn't they? Yeah, you know? exactly. Let me ask you, red car for those of y'all who haven't been on red carpets, red carpets is a very... Fast pace, um, and get a little emotional sometimes too. You ever got into it with somebody on the carpet? Oh no, I've no. never got gotten into it. Because mm -hmm. there be people getting into it. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm again, I've never gotten into it. I don't really get into it with people, but mm -hmm. but you have got to let people know. You know, you you you're gonna get what you came to do because some people are greedy on the carpet. Like the publicist can easily say everybody one question. Mm -hmm. The person next to you that could be going right before you, they could That's literally fine. ask five, <laughs> right? And you know they heard her say everybody's done one question, and then you're gonna do five. Then at that point, you have to just just jump in the conversation. Okay, thank. Go ahead with your question. You know the publicist should pull them or tap them on the shoulder or something. They should. But if they don't, because they're all fumbling their papers, trying to see what they're going to do next, not paying attention, you know they have a hard out, then no, you interject yourself into the conversation and ask your question. Because if you just sit there and let them, that person in front of you do a whole Barbara Walters special, <laughs> you might not get your opportunity. Because everybody don't play fair. They don't. So... I've never gotten into it with anybody, but you do need to be stern and professional and make sure you get what you came to get. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I like how we get this one-on-one -on -one red carpet training. Like, mm -hmm. this, this, is, this is good stuff. Yeah. I, I love this a lot because I think there are, you know, a lot of journalists that are watching right now haven't really had the chance to experience red carpet. Might be afraid of the red carpet. You know, the red carpet can be intimidating sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not it's not all peaches and cream. Like, you know, no. it's been... Uh, it could be a jungle. Yeah. Literally, it can <laughs> be a jungle because in a lot of times, all the celebrities are late and everybody comes at one time. Mm -hmm. Right? So, it's been many times... Oh, I remember at the Tyler Perry thing, I had to choose between interviewing... I can't remember who the second person was, but I had to choose between interviewing Felicia Rashad, the great <laughs> Felicia Rashad... And somebody else, I can't remember who it was Felicia and Debbie Allen, they were together. Mm. And somebody else, and I'm like, Are you kidding me right now? Yeah. I have to you have to choose because yeah. they're either gonna have to keep going to the next mm. person or you know, and I can't remember who I, I can't remember who I chose. I, I can't remember, but it's certain ones that I had to get for the Hollywood Report the story. Yeah. So I had to stick I saw my, my list of who I wanted to talk to mm. and people that I know they would want me to. Yeah, because right. wasn't like wasn't if I'm not mistaken because I remember I Frances because I remember Frances Amber she was telling me she got an interview with Todd Perry and Oprah wasn't that the weren't they on the carpet at the yeah, same time? Yes, <laughs> that was they were because they was when they came to me they were next to each other, mm -hmm. you know right and that's how that's when I interviewed Oprah because she came down. Why well, interview well for me when they interviewed me when I interviewed them they were you know and it was individual. But Fran was a little further down the carpet. Yeah. So by the time mm -hmm. they got to her, they were together. So that's how she was able <laughs> to get those two, you know, to bounce off of the both of them. But by the time when I did Tyler's, because they brought Tyler over to me and I interviewed him. And then I interviewed, um, you know, Oprah singularly. I'm almost sure I did. Um, and then there was Whoopi Goldberg. That was, I had to... I had to choose between interviewing, Whoopi. no, I had a group interview at the same time. It was Whoopi Goldberg and Holly Berry. Wow. And, right. <laughs> like, yo, right, please don't. Right. So I'm sitting here interviewing um, Whoopi Goldberg, and then the interview pretty much just flops because Haley Berry walks over, and then they start like, oh my God, talking oh, yeah, to each other. Like that. Yeah, they feel like that. Yeah, they were excited to see each other, time, yeah. right? <laughs> so I'm still trying to hold it together and still get something from both of them. So I just got the shot. I still got them, you know, interacting, which is cool. But that happens sometimes. Like, what do you do when you have to choose with two huge interviews? Which one are you going to choose? Why? You have to make that decision within a split second. Yeah. So... <laughs> That's crazy to be like that, cause yeah, like, it, 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 yeah, making making those choices is like wow, like 
<laughs> Which might be you go to. Right, right. It's It'd like, are you kidding me right now? I have to choose? Yeah, so, yeah, wow. That, that's crazy. Yeah, you, like, man, that, I feel like that event in itself, like, even if that was the only thing that you did, like, <laughs> like you are set, you know, like, right. you got, like, you can make a whole reel off of that one event, like. <laughs> <laughs> that one night, it could be the only reel. If that was the only reel you had, you got to go. Yeah. Cause everybody ain't, ain't everybody ain't got that. Mm -mm, everybody mm -hmm. no. Not not all at one time. Mm -hmm. It's like you may get them over the course of a year's worth of events. Yeah. But at this event, they all there. Yeah, you have all the A-list people. All of them. <laughs> all of them, and they were all so happy to be there. They all considered it an honor to be there to witness what he had done. And everybody was willing to talk. Um, Cause Tucker was excited, just so many. And I just love seeing celebrities being excited because some, sometimes when they come to events, they're tired. You can tell they're in the the system, the <laughs> mundane of it all. Mm -hmm. But they were all absolutely in the awe of being there, and I like to see that. That that that's awesome. Yeah, because you got to see everybody in a good space. Everybody was happy. Everybody yes. was excited for you know him and what he was doing and going on. So that's. That's awesome. That's amazing. You, like I said, you've had some great opportunities. People, you know, opportunities that lots of journalists dream of. Yeah. And then for you, I mean, and then it just goes to show you for you not to be at like a, you like, a, well, of course you were representing National Outlet, but for you not to be working consistently for like ET or something, you right. getting all this stuff. That is an inspiration. Right, <laughs> right. Because ultimately, I was this every entertainment reporter's dream, right? It's so we're going <laughs> to outlet like entertainment tonight. Yeah. I've been watching it since forever, elementary school, you right? So it's like everybody's dream. And so, but that night was like entertainment tonight on steroids. Wow. Right? It was, just, <laughs> it was just such, it was just such an amazing, amazing opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to, just to witness it. Yeah, for sure. And let's talk about some other stuff you've done because you actually had a you had a show at AIB, right? Yes, <laughs> I did. Yeah. So how was so how was that? Because that was that was in the spotlight with Kim. It's called in the spotlight mm -hmm. with Kim Ford, and I pretty much pulled that from the relationships that I already had with different celebrities. Um, I just pretty much just hit them up and said, "Hey, will you be a guest on my show?" <laughs> that was it. Was pretty much boiled down to that, yeah. but I was the executive producer. Nice. Um, Loved it. And so I created everything. I'll tell you everything from the graphics, some of the graphics, to who was going to be on the show. Mm -hmm. um, another executive producer was Matt Abels. Um, so some mm -hmm. relationships came from Matt. Yeah, um, I know some Matt. some mm -hmm. came from me. Shout out to Matt. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I was able to kind of have them come on my couch. Mm -hmm. And we just talk about, you know, everything that, that, the whole point of the show was to talk about everything that educates, inspires, and entertains. Mm -hmm. So, that's the type of guest I would have. So, I would have, like, a J.K. Mm -hmm. car on. Nice. I would have, I had David Banner on. Okay. <laughs> it was a whole <laughs> gamut of people. I had Isaac Curry on. Love it. I had, um, so many wonderful, wonderful, great people on. And they was able to... Really talking to our, uh, even Rashad Ali. Rashad has done so much. Yeah, Rashad is, yeah, I love, I love Rashad. She's big time. Yes, Rashad, <laughs> that is sore, Rashad. That's my sister. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and so she has done so much in the industry from her radio days, television, ESPN, yeah, even to what she does. Sister Circle. Yeah. <laughs> like so many things. So I was, I was honored to just actually have her on. Of course, Willie Moore Jr. was on. Willie Moore Jr. Shout out to Willie <laughs> Um, so we were just able to have conversations with these type of, type of people who talked about their career, yeah. how to get there, any hurdles, balancing work, life, family, all those things. It was it was really great. We did about three seasons there. Wow, that's awesome. I, I love that. Like so, with how did it? Because I know it takes a lot when you like to go to a network to get a show and stuff. Because uh, I think it might have been a little bit different with you because I remember me because like I had a show on AIB last year and stuff but I think it's a little bit different now so how what was the process like when you went to get a show um me, Matt and I were working together and he asked me excuse me sorry I'm gonna edit all that out <laughs> <laughs> um 
Matt and I were working together and he asked me, he said, hey, what do you think about doing a TV show? I said, yes and yes. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> how do we make this work? Yeah. Um, and so he did, he was actually already working there at AIB. Mm -hmm. And he asked me well, what I wanted to look like. And so I took some time to kind of think about it and I put some things on paper and I told him, we met with the other people that were working there and they thought it would be a great fit. Um, and it worked out. They hired me to do it, and um, which was great. Um, the, the team there was, was 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 good, and I was able to do what I normally do on the red carpet. But I just had a lot, obviously, a lot more time. Yeah. These, these were sit down <laughs> interviews, mm -hmm. right? It wasn't a quick hurry up and get your questions in. <laughs> I had time to actually delve into who they are. We had special performances sometimes mm -hmm. with different artists. Um, and I love to give like indie artists a shot. So some of them were indie artists okay, um, who were really, really good. So I was able to really construct what would I want this show to look like. That's pretty much how that came together. Matt had his, had his ideas, I had mine, and we kind of brought them together. Nice. So when you did the show there, did you own the rights or did they own the rights? Or what was no, no, no. It, it was an AIB show. Okay, so it was their so show. So it was okay, their gotcha. show. Yeah. Okay. Because at any point they would they would come in and, and the spotlight would change up mm. right change it up so they definitely own the show but I would um because um, that's what they wanted they wanted a type of show I uh, wasn't it wasn't know. I didn't go in to I didn't go in to buy space mm -hmm. to have my own show mm -hmm. so that would be something totally different at that point yeah. I would own that gotcha. uh -huh. right but they this was their content okay but they needed um, someone to host it and because I brought so many mm -hmm. ideas and had relationships, goes back to the relationships. <laughs> because I had that, that means I need an EP credit on this. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's how, in addition to them hiring me to do it, I got an EP credit for doing it because I brought so much to that to, to make it happen. Yeah, that's awesome. I, that, that, is, that is some good stuff there. And it's just when you, I'm telling you, like, I've been saying this for a long time, when you have the connections, mm -hmm. when you got the relationship, mm -hmm. you will go far. Mm -hmm. And if you're a good person, you're a good person. Yeah, <laughs> be a good person. Yeah. Be nice and friendly, <laughs> like, just be a generally good person, you know? Be a good person. Don't be a butthole, because no. that, is, <laughs> people don't want to work with you. Nobody wants to work with that yeah. person, or if you always have an attitude or something, it's always wrong. Mm -hmm. Always could be you, my guy, my sis. It could be you because nobody is gonna want to keep that around. Because you're, when you're on set, you're there a long time, mm -hmm. so you want to be around good people. You know, even when things are difficult or hard or keeps changing, you don't want to be around people who's gonna have a pity party every single time. So. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of good relationships, it was funny because last night, my aunt, matter of fact, we talked about this off camera, but mom was watching a TV show and she seen you on there. Ah. You was interviewing, um, you interviewed Ron, right? Ron Yeah, yes. yeah, from New Edition. So how did, how did, well, how did that experience come about? Because that was like a documentary, right? Yes, that was a documentary we shot a couple of years ago. Um, it was about the life of Michael Bivin, mm -hmm. um, the great Michael Bivin of New <laughs> Edition and DVD. Yeah. Um, Mike actually hit me up. He just DM'd me. He was like, him, what do you, um, are you available to shoot? I'm, here, I'm doing this documentary. Mm -hmm. Are you able to do the Atlanta interviews? Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, once again, yes, yes, and <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? yeah. He was like, is nobody, this is literally what he said. He said, is nobody else in Atlanta. I would want to do my Atlanta interviews, and I know you can hold me down. I was like, I love that for you. Right, right. <laughs> I was like, yes. I was like, absolutely. So I interviewed Michael Bivens, um, Jermaine Dupree, um, um, Brooke. Um, I cannot, I don't know why. Brooke Payne, sorry, mm -hmm. which is New Edition's choreographer. Um, and some more individuals that, that he did business with. Remember that sound? If y'all remember, if you, if you saw the New Edition movie, <laughs> Michael Bivens walked into that dinner with his attorney and said, hey, I'm firing you. This is my new guy. I'll holler at you later. That's the guy I interviewed. <laughs> the, new, the new attorney. So we talked yeah. about that scene. It was such a pivotal point in new edition because this is when they realized it wasn't getting paid what they should have been and they got new management, new team. Um, but yeah, Mike just hit me up. Um, we had several you know, phone conversations to say, hey, this is who we're going to interview. And we did, it was over... I can't remember if it was in one week or a couple weeks, but 
He would just say, hey, this is who this person is. Um, he would give me notes, and I would come up with questions. He had questions, yeah. um, but sometimes he was like, feel free to, you know, do your thing. You're at liberty. This is what you do. So, mm -hmm. um, but this is who this person was. These are, you know, high points you, you can talk about. Um, so it was really, really, really great to just to be a part of him telling his life story. Yeah, that, that, that's fantastic, like, because I remember you were posting your videos on Instagram, and I was like, I need to be over there shadowing Kim, because <laughs> Kim, I'm like, Kim doing all this stuff, I'm like, she ain't yeah. doing a documentary interview, yeah. like, I need to have that stuff, <laughs> <yet."> like, <laughs> like, that's, yeah. like, that's crazy, and that, that is so awesome, like, I will say, like, if there was, like, a perfect i guess you know like you could say like how you have the american dream there's like a perfect journalism dream i would say you are living the journalism really world. wow <laughs> like, you know it doesn't always feel like that because there's always i'm always focused on the work of it you mm -hmm. know the building of it um i guess it's just like sometimes if, if it's a wedding and someone is getting married they're so sometimes in the weeds of dressing the hair, the this and the that, and the that, and the people, that, their guests that are coming, they're like, hi, oh my God. But the bride is like, oh, I'm so dark, you know? <laughs> no, it's a lot of, you know? But it's kind of like that. So I do appreciate it. I know there's been favor, mm -hmm. but I know the importance of doing, just doing good work and being a great person because they're gonna circle back and hit you up and say, hey, can you do this too? Yeah. Hey, can you do this too? You know, and that comes with longevity. You know, social media is now, and a lot of people want it to happen ASAP right now within six months of your career, you've done all these things. Okay, mm -hmm. it could possibly happen, but more than likely, it does not work that way. This was over yeah. a series of time yeah. of me being in the industry, figuring it Putting out. In work. Night after mm -hmm. night, creating the content. I can't get the video edited. It's stuck. I have to ask this person, you know, really putting it on my back but consistently showing up on social media at these events. And so eventually then that's how people end up. You're the first person they think about. It's like, oh, this person is always out doing it. This person would be great. So yeah. Okay, cool. And then you've also had opportunities to like do commentating too on like some shows and stuff. I saw some of that um, footage because like you've done like common, you know, you would go on there and be a commentator for like a couple entertainment shows. And I want to know how do you get to that like you know because like a lot of these shows you can like you know come on like you don't necessarily work for that station but you can come on and commentate on whatever's going on oh like a on-air expert <clears throat> yeah yeah that that mm -hmm. so i did that for cnn mm -hmm. so once again do the work and they will find you <laughs> okay. um i was at a women's uh entrepreneur type event with Nicole Kane, formerly on um, NicoleBeachy.com. And so on the panel, she had women there who were over, one person represented CNN, another person represented, you know, other different outfits. And so she, they were saying how to get your brand on the show, right? And so if I didn't have a brand I wanted to get on, but I myself wanted to get on. Yeah. So after it was over, that goes back again to what you said earlier, you can't be afraid. So I walked up to her, I said, hey, I'm Kim Ford. Um, blah, 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 this is what I do. How do I become an on-air expert on CNN to cover entertainment? Flat out, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah, right? you gotta ask the question. Listen, you gotta <laughs> ask the question and you gotta <laughs> ask it like you belong there. So, she, I was telling her what I do, you know, and she was like, wait a minute, what's your name again? And I said, Kim Ford. She was like, wait, are you on Instagram? I said, yes, and I told her what my Instagram is. I am Kim Ford. And so, <laughs> She immediately pulled out her phone. She goes to Instagram and she was like, uh-huh, that's what I thought. I already follow you. This was a producer at CNN. What? <laughs> this was a producer at CNN, right? Yeah. And so I was like, wow. She said, I understand exactly what you're trying to do because I'm, I'm familiar with your brand. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted critiques yeah. on how do I get to that level? Mm -hmm. You know, and then she did tell me, she said, well, you know, we already have people there on staff that's been waiting to go on air, you know, sometimes it can be months, you know, they, they, you know, they basically pay their dues. Mm -hmm. She calls me or texts me or emails me one the very next day and said, can you be on set this Sunday and do a segment on Remix? Wow. Once again, that. my answer was <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. I'm like, oh my God, you know, like, yes. once, in addition to Entertainment Tonight, 
CNN? Are you kidding me? Absolutely. I want to be something like that. So I'm like looking at my phone, like, or the email, whatever it was. I forgot what she sent. But I'm like, are you kidding me right now? And so I was like, oh my God. She was like, this is what the talking points are. This is what we want to talk about. They basically wanted my take on what's relevant in film and television. Mm -hmm. So I went to CNN. I checked in. I see all the background and how the behind the scenes type stuff. Once so familiar, like the BET Hip Hop Awards, I'm like, oh my God, I am really here at That's CNN. So awesome. About to go on air, right? And so. That was, that was really great to see how that works. They had hair and makeup already. They do your hair, they do your makeup, they do all the do blurry. You gotta do nothing. Show up. That, right? <laughs> Show up and do your thing. Right, that is so different from, you know, once again, a media outlet. Mm -hmm. I gotta go get my hair done, go get my face beat. Yeah. That stuff is not cheap. It costs a lot, especially if you do it consistently over and over again, right? I'm like, wow, it's, this is like the life. And so I went there. Um, and it was amazing and after it, after it was over I immediately went to her and I said okay hey what can I fix because I really wanted her to critique me like I am fully open for critique and so she's like no nothing everything was was fine like she was like I literally have no critiques for you and she knew at the end the person that was um, interviewing me kind of threw a curveball because she asked me a question that we hadn't went over yet they ready. I already had an answer for it. I was able to, you know, <laughs> expound on it and, and, and everything. And she was like, even though she threw you that curveball and added that in because it was a part of the conversation, I like how you handled it, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't prepare for that pretty much, but you knew how to keep the conversation going yeah. and had something relevant to say. I was like, wow. She's like, no, I have zero critiques for you. I was like, wow. And of course, I thanked her for the opportunity. I soaked in every single thing I saw. I paid attention to what the cameraman was doing, the teleprompter. Mm -hmm. The reporter, I, I paid attention to everything. Yeah. Because how often are you going to be in the, in the CNN studio? Mm -hmm. um, and it was for actually for CNN, HLN, same thing. Mm -hmm. um, it was for one of their mornings, uh, well, Weekend Express. Um, all of these things I'm talking about, you can find it on my website if you want to see any of these clips from <laughs> Tyler Perry to this and what I'm talking about. It's all there. Um, I am Kim Ford .com. And And so that was great. And then they asked me to come on again. Um, the next time I went, it was actually on my birthday, so that was like a really That's birthday. A gift, like, right? <laughs> I'm coming. Was, it was like, can you come back and do it again? It was a different topic, but it was still dealing with film and television. Yeah. And so I was like, absolutely. And it's on my birthday. Of course, I want to be on CNN on my birthday. That's that's yes. like <laughs> the ultimate. You know, unfortunately, she ended up leaving CNN and going to a different network, so that relationship was lost. And that's I hate when that happens. I, like when you have the relationship and that person leaves, yes. and you don't know nobody else over there. Like. Right. Or even the people yeah. that I knew, I went back through my email chain of emails, I emailed them, some of them had left too, or moved to a different yeah. position, or it was just like, oh my gosh, it's like, <laughs> how do I get back there? So I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I thought that was that was really, really an exciting I had an opportunity. I said I could do this every single day because I loved it. The conversation was great. Um, and so, yeah, that's another monumental event that's, mm -hmm. that I remember in my career. Yeah, I, I love that for you. And, and I'm glad that you mentioned that because that's something I, like, I recently been trying to tap into that. Is like being an expert on some of these shows and stuff because, um, like, every, so I recently, you probably saw, I recently did an interview with Candy, right? Okay, yeah. It's been, Everywhere, everybody's talking about it. Like, yeah. I need to be an expert somewhere talking about these housewives. Right, right. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? Because I, like, you know, as a viewer, as a fan, and then I've also been interviewing almost all of them yeah. about certain stuff. And it's, you know, it just, I just don't, I have a lot of connections. I just don't have those type of connections mm. yet. It's kind of. It'll come to you when you do the work, and I yeah. think, you know, it, then it will start coming to you because none of the big things that I did. Mm -hmm. I looked for them. Mm -hmm. Like all those opportunities came to me. Yeah. I mean, even the CNN thing, I did ask her how do I, I just want to ask her for a mm -hmm. critique. Like, what do I need to do? What, you know, but it ended up, ended up with an opportunity on air in less than a week from when I asked her. Mm -hmm. Even the Tyler Perry thing, that came from a referral from working with somebody else and he just knew I was in the industry, knew I did good work. He would be sometimes right next to me on the carpet sometimes. <laughs> when he worked AP in Atlanta and then yeah. he got he moved to LA and then he worked in AP in LA. Mm -hmm. 
he wasn't in Atlanta anymore, but he knew who to send him to. Oh yeah, Kim can do that. I like that. I, and I bet you, I bet you going, I bet you next time, because NABJ is going to be in Chicago, I feel like you probably make those connections at NABJ. I think so too. Yeah. Um, NABJ is a yeah. great place. <laughs> um, yeah, I would love to see them do more like entertainment type panels mm -hmm. and discussions. So my, my last interview was just saying that too. Like, <laughs> they was just talking about more entertainment at NABJ. So yeah. Hopefully they listen and get some more ideas, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that'd be that'd be fantastic because a lot of people are tapping into entertainment now. Entertainment is huge, is booming, is growing, and that's what I want to actually too. I don't well, of course you know it, but have you noticed like ever since? So we had Francesca here, right? She was one of the number one entertainment reporters here in Atlanta, doing the A scene on Eleven Alive. Mm -hmm. Ever since she left, because she left, um, Astrid Martinez from CBS Forty Six now A and F left, like. Our new stations aren't really doing entertainment like that since these people have left. Well, here's the thing. <clears throat> Not too long after they left, the pandemic happened. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is what changed a lot yeah. of people's careers, including mine. Like, it changed a lot because a lot of... Uh, entertainment was the last thing people wanted on air. They wanted... And I talked to Fran about that. She was like... She, she, they pretty much stopped reporting on... During COVID, they stopped really talking about entertainment and she had she was reporting on other stories like health and whole just other things it wasn't entertainment and obviously they went on for a very long time so it just so happened you know um, Astrid went to yeah another I think she's in New York right now the CBS affiliate mm -hmm. and so I think she went to Black News Channel she did go to Black News Channel at first mm -hmm. um, and then she went on to um, CBS in New York doing it until she had um, Astra. And that's why I met Astra at a press junket at the Ritz Carlton. But yeah, mm -hmm. just meeting these people, you just randomly meet people. And actually, Rashawn, I think Rashawn and Ali was the one that introduced us. Okay. And, nice. But the thing is, yeah, it kind of happened simultaneously as the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Because they left probably right before it happened. Yeah. So in addition to them leaving, had it not happened, they probably could have kept the scene going, but yeah. so many interviews, it was a lot of less and less um, red carpets, specifically mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Um, mm -hmm. If you were a smaller outlet, they reduced it to just virtual. Yeah. Who wants to do all of their things virtual? Yeah, uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, doing the virtual stuff, which was actually, it was good and bad, but like, I know when we did the virtual stuff, I was able to do a lot more LA related stuff. Yeah. While I was here, so that was a plus, but it was still virtual. It's like it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> you're used to the whole activation. They mm -hmm. used to the press lunches, and then you, from the you go from the press lunch, and then you actually go to the screening, and then you talk to the producers, the writers, the actors. You ask them whatever questions you want to ask, and you conduct your story. You create your story, um, and whatever your format is. Um, and then all of a sudden to have that much one-on-one -on -one time with the talent and the crew to just, oh, it's just a Zoom interview. You'll be on for five minutes and then that's it. And then, and that, and then that is the norm, mm -hmm. you know? And so that really, really changed a lot. So Atlanta's entertainment reporting is definitely <clears throat> not the same as it was then in those years, not even five years ago. Um, it's not the same because so much has moved to virtual because obviously if a TV or a studio can say, hey, we can save X amount of thousand dollars and just do it virtual. If you cut out, you know, Atlanta and they only do maybe New York and L.A. <laughs> as the main ones where they do like in person or one big one in L.A. and everybody else is virtual. It just changes a lot of opportunities. Yes. You know, also there's AFCA. I'm a member of AFCA. AFCA. Mm -hmm. as, I mean, it stands for the African Americans Film Critics Association. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even during COVID, that's where a lot I did a lot of my interviews. I interviewed Spike Lee. Nice. Um, so many, many other other we still have to take care of each other. And that was the whole point of AFTA is to promote black film and the actors and the actresses. Um, so a lot of, of course there was resume as well, but um, the alternative was either nothing was going on or they were able to get together and still promote films through Africa. So that was really, really great. Shout out to Guild in, in LA for Africa, creating Africa. Now they have the Africa Awards and 
you know, Charlemagne, Charlemagne, the guy from the Breakfast Club, he's been there. He boasted mm -hmm. highly about it mm -hmm. because the Africa Awards, yes, we have the Emmys, we have the Oscars, we have the Globes, yeah. but the Africa Awards is just about us and mm -hmm. our excellence. So I love that. That's great as well. That's fantastic. Well, this has been this has been awesome. I really appreciate you so much for coming on. But last but not least, I do want to hit on this right now. So I am Kim Ford. You know everything that you have going on. What does the future look like? You know what's next? What are, what are we working on right now? Um, right now that I'm finishing grad school, I'm going to continue to launch into tech. In addition to that, I'm going to continue to pro my, promote my book, which is, you know, called It's Never Too Late. I did um, see that. The ultimate, that. Thank you. That's awesome. The, um, the ultimate guide to make an epic comeback after a setback. Because people see, girls would see me on the carpet, I would do all these things, and they would think life would be so glamorous. But I'm like, no, there's a whole story going on. I was going through a divorce at the time. And so in the book, I show how it's never too late to do those things you wanted to do, whether it's going back to school or launching a media outlet, right? Mm -hmm. If you still have a story you want to tell or, you know, an, an audience you know is underserved, launch it. If you think, oh, nobody's going to care, it's too niche, launch it. You know, it's never too late. So I want to continue to promote my book currently on Amazon. Love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, definitely want to do more speaking engagements. Um, that's the main thing I want to do and relaunch my site and start covering mm -hmm. more more events But right now my immediate focus is delving a little bit more into tech because as I as AI comes on the scene So many things mm -hmm. it's, it's changing so many industries So launching into tech I want to understand exactly where is it going to kind of get ahead of um, How does that affect the media industry? So I'm going to yeah. be in, in both worlds I love that. Yeah. Tech is, um, like I said earlier, tech is huge. It's booming. You're in the right industry. And then you mentioned AI. I mean, hey, hey I already know AI helps a lot with this podcast, yeah. a lot with this company and stuff. Like, I get AI, AI does all the ribs. All right. So right. Shout out, hey, shout out oh, to wow. AI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you can. And I, and I love it. I, I love AI so much because it just makes life so much easier. It does. It does. <laughs> right. Some people think, oh my God, it's gonna, you know, it's a balance. You just have to know how to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, even in chat GPT, you, it helps. That is my friend. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it helps that you just create friend, things. You know, like, what would normally business. take you a week to maybe write because of mm -hmm. other things you got to do, it sits there and writes it in like a couple seconds. Yeah. But then you put your own DNA on it and now it's yours. You know, mm -hmm. it's. Just so much in tech is just growing extremely fast. And in, in my opinion, for where I am in my life right now, um, doing hard news, well, hard news was never in my, in my, mm -hmm. my never yeah. my goals. <laughs> um, however, where I am right now in life, I want to be able to merge the world of tech and media and speaking and continue building my personal brand. Love it, and, and I see that for you. Big things coming your way, and it's a, hey, it's only up from here. And I already know we're gonna see some more huge things coming from you and your brand and everything you got going on. So we we, we gonna keep it out on Kim Ford. Awesome, shout and congratulations to you, Tyree. Oh, I want to you. give a shout out to you. <laughs> this is an amazing studio, fresh out of college. You know, sure. this is amazing that you you took a stand and started creating your own. Content, many other things you could have done straight out of college, but it's it's admirable that you chose to do this. So congratulations! Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I greatly appreciate that. Appreciate you so much for coming on the show. Um, go ahead, shout out your social media and stuff. Where can people follow you? Let everybody know. Yeah, you can follow me on. I'm mostly on Instagram at I am Kim Ford. Um, you can also go to my website I am Kim Ford dot com. Subscribe to my newsletter and. Um, I'm everywhere, but I'm mostly on um, Instagram at I am Kim Ford. Awesome. Are you on YouTube too? Oh, yes. I am on YouTube, so please subscribe to my channel. Um, and that also is I am Kim Ford. You'll be able to see all the old, old <laughs> interviews I've done. I haven't deleted anything. So you will see all the, the, the progress. You'll be able to tell, oh, yeah, that was when she was first, when she first started. So you'll be able to see. It'd be like that. If, really, right? You know? I got my old clips It up was too. like, by any means necessary, I'm going to get this done. And I'll figure it out on the way there. 
So, but yeah, definitely keep up with me on YouTube, um, I am Kim Ford, and Instagram at I am Kim Ford. Awesome. I love that. Yeah, I'm a big YouTube advocate because let me yeah. tell you, I, t I, I made this quote. I said it the other day, YouTube will retire me. Yeah, so yes, you, yes. yes. Like, but way yeah. before Instagram will. Exactly. Like, yeah. If you're an influencer and you're able to get brand deals, then yeah, you can work do the, the back work around with Instagram. But YouTube is will pay you. Yeah, because all, like, all you need with YouTube, all you need is yourself. Yeah. You don't need nobody else. All you got to do is continue to create content. YouTube Shorts. Yeah. If you're not tapped in, tap into YouTube Shorts. Ah, yeah, YouTube I already looked into YouTube Shorts. Yeah, because it's it's like tick it's like TikTok a little bit. Cause like you can have like like you may have maybe a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I mean on YouTube, some of your shorts. I got a short on there, forty one k. Oh wow. Like it is it, the it's crazy. Wow. YouTube Shorts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm gonna look at. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. ask you for a tutorial. Mm -hmm. Matter of <laughs> fact, yeah. And matter of fact, what you can do, all them celebrity interviews that you got, put those like. Oh, put those, purpose it. Yes, put those in the AI. Let them make sixty second or less clips. Post a YouTube short every day. Yo, yo, yeah. stuff. Will, right? You will be swimming in chat. I'm telling you. I'm yes. gonna look at it. I promise <laughs> you. You gotta tell me once, and I'm on it. Sorry. All right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> All right, I love that, man. So, yeah, y'all, appreciate y'all so much for tuning in to this episode of NJP, Navigating Journalism Podcast. It's been your host, Tyreek Wynn. Make sure y'all go follow me on Instagram, Tyreek Wynn, the iHeartRadio, also on Twitter or X, Tyreek Wynn TV. And then you can go check me out on Facebook, like the Facebook page, Tyreek Wynn, iHeartRadio. If you want to be a guest on Navigating Journalism Podcast, all you got to do is hit the DM. Comment down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And of course, you got to go get the merch. And just launched the store recently, Tyree Gwynn Collection. Click the link in my Instagram bio. It says clothing line. Take you directly to the clothing line. You can get the I Am a Winner shirt. We got these. We got NJP merch. We got podcaster merch, journalism merch. All that good stuff. You guys can go get that on the Tyree Gwynn Collection website. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Tune in next time. We're going to have more great shows coming in the future. Peace.